structure of my talk very quickly number one we're going to look at some of the challenges we face as a community or as individuals trying to build a Muslim home then we're going to look at the extent of those challenges so we look at some statistics which might scare some of us but it's needed inshallah um, we look at the causes of those issues that we face and the most important part which is be the bulk of my talk today is the solutions and as I said, a family is made up of husband, wife, and children. I'm going to talk about the husband-wife relationship because they're the, the cornerstone of that home. Why is it when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to me and you that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's might and power and His gift and recognition of Allah's might that is created for us spouses? Which means that a spouse one to the other is a blessing from Allah. So that you may find tranquility in that spouse. By the system of Allah, it should be that every couple that gets married should be happy, should remain happy. Is why is it then that if Allah has established for marriages to be successful, why is it that some aren't? Number one, relationship stress. The challenge we have is that husband and wife are living together in a home and there's stress, there's unhappiness, there's discomfort. This is a challenge. I cannot believe anybody wakes up in the morning thinking, how many problems can I give my spouse today? If it can be 10 today, it's the greatest day. No, we wake up hoping for joy, for happiness, for comfort. So why do we have relationship stress? Number two, interferences why is it that husband and wife as much as they love one another they want to be together they want things to be beautiful but they're struggling because of interferences that can be family interference that can be social media interference and many other things but there are things that are distracting us from focusing on our marriages properly financial challenges right the money is not there. We're not fulfilling our daily needs as we would like to. And of course, too little family time. In actual fact, the correct wording should be too little time for family. We are too busy. With everything else, I'm as much guilty of this as anybody else. But I give you the confidence to know there's a way to improve it, inshallah. And we will find a way through it. May Allah guide us, inshallah. I was reading recently a study done by a Muslim who interviewed Imams and Sheikhs uh, throughout Australia. And because the Bureau of Statistics says that overall in the whole of Australia, the divorce rate is like 36% of all marriages break up. And so this lady was trying to prove that Islamically cannot be that high. And she was totally shocked when she realized the percentage of Muslim marriages that breakup in Australia is 36%. Even I couldn't believe it. But let us realize what a big challenge it is. And let's hope that the, the seven practical solutions I'm sharing with you today will be of benefit to all, inshallah. Number two, domestic violence. Again, reflecting on the national statistics, when it was narrowed down to Muslim, we were very similar to the national statistics. So let us wake up to this reality. There is no verse in the Quran, no sunnah from Muhammad that permits a man to hit his wife. And the world is saying Muslims do it. But let it be very clear today, inshallah, so that I can relieve myself of this responsibility and tell you that no man, Muslim or non-Muslim, but more so as Muslims who believe in Allah have the right to hit their wife no right but I'm serious for this is damaging our families it's breaking up relationships leaving children without a parent number three family separations listen to the statistics the Bureau of Australian Bureau of Statistics ABS an average marriage lasts for eight years why is it we'll talk about it 
49% of divorces includes children. Out of that 49%, half of them include children under the age of 17. I don't think parents realize the impact that that has on that child. You'll only know if you are a child from a broken home. What it does to you. One boy told me straight, I said, what's wrong? He's misbehaving. He's not listening. He don't pay attention. And I asked him, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's the issue? He didn't want to say. He didn't want to say. And then tears rolled down his eyes. And he says, I just want my mom and dad to be together. That's all he wants. My brothers and sisters, wake up to this reality. What's the cause of it? Number one, we lack a good understanding of marriage in Islam. Learn nothing about marriage. I can do this. This is easy. Like anything, marriage needs us to educate ourselves about it. Lack of iman. A lot of times we make decisions in our marriages that are contrary to Islam and then not willing to change. And the reason number one why we don't change is because we're not even willing to accept the weakness. Seven practical solutions. Number one, anger management. Because the truth is, anger turns our world upside down. This is reality. Because when we're angry, we say things that we don't intend to say. Sometimes we mean it, but later we regret it. We need to develop some anger management strategies. Anybody here has that skill of not getting angry? Please teach us. It's do we react to it in an angry manner? Some manage it well, some don't. Some are very patient, some are impatient. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the real pious ones, the ones who are genuine in their obedience to Allah, they're able to restrain themselves in the moment of anger. And they're oft forgiving. Even when it is their right to be upset, they're able to forgive. It doesn't mean every incident needs to be swept under the carpet, no. Let us develop strategies when these things do infuriate us. How do I manage myself to prevent myself from saying or doing things that I'm going to regret later and harm my family, scar my children forever? Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet وسلم, said, Overpowering somebody in wrestling or arm wrestling, that doesn't make you a tough guy. A real tough guy. Someone to admire is when he has physically the ability to react and to respond, but chooses not to. That's an honorable man. That is an honorable woman. That is somebody worthy of respect. So really thinking that in exerting my anger and my power and my control over my family, I'm macho, I'm the guy, I'm the it. No, you're not. Most times, exerting our anger is the sign of our insecurities. So my only way to exert power is to get angry, become aggressive. But if you're cool and calm, it's a sign of confidence from within. Number two, marriage education. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it cannot be that the person who knows and does not know are equal. No, they're not. The one who knows, the one who strives to educate themselves, build their knowledge, build their expertise, build their skill, is always better than the one who doesn't want to do it. So we need to go to those who know, inquire about the rules of marriage, the rules of talaq, and hopefully never get to use it. But know about it. Know about my duty as a husband, my duty as a wife, my responsibilities as a father, etc., etc. Know about it. Don't think, well, I'll figure it out as day goes by day. No. There are chapters in books of hadith, chapters in books of fiqh that discusses these things. So it is studied in depth. Go to those who know and inquire the knowledge. If you want to get married, it's a duty, it's compulsory to educate ourselves about marriage. Not my words, the words of the Prophet So you've gone through the process, got married, did the causes, but you're still struggling. This is where you can get a bit of help. 
So get the counseling not when, you know, it's about to break into pieces. But along the way, when you realize, look, I'm struggling with this. I can't figure it out. We're not moving forward. Let's get some help. Ask those who have some understanding, those who have some experience. For they will be able to guide you through it. Rather than when everything falls apart, no, it's sometimes and most times too late. Number four, we should probably be number one, bring the Quran and the Sunnah completely into our lives. So we start picking and choosing when we want to follow the Hadith and when we want to follow the Quran. If we pick and choose, we're treading the path of Shaitan. What is the system of Shaitan? Follow your nafs, follow your nafs, follow your nafs. And that which is in Quran and Hadith which suits us. So don't say I'm following the Quran, following my nafs. So in a marriage, when we are trying to build this Muslim home, our first step is the relationship between husband and wife. If we have a stable relationship between husband and wife, when Allah grants us offspring, they grow up, they live in a school, calm environment. And you will see the influence it has and impact on your children. All of a sudden, they are cool and calm and not aggressive. But when they are growing up in an aggressive home, always angry, the atmosphere is tense, kids, they feel it and they develop their own strategies to react to it. If we are cool and calm and measured and in control of things, we create a calm environment in our homes, our kids will grow up in that calm environment. What dad does, they think that's the right thing to do and they will emulate it and follow it. Number five, improve our communication. There's one verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun, talk to him very calmly. Don't be aggressive. Don't get rough. Look at the next part. This is the part of importance. That perhaps that your calmness will either make him heed for what you're saying or develop a sense of awe for you. Even somebody who wants to say something back at you will be relaxed. And more so in marriages, my brothers and sisters. No matter how stressful things might become. No matter how difficult a situation might be. But speaking loud, humiliating each other does not resolve it. It makes it worse. But if you calmly waited till your anger subsided if you were angry. And then sit down and say, you know, look at this. This is the situation. How are we going to resolve it? You will find some direction. It won't solve your problem. Listen to the hadith of the Prophet Subhanallah. A person came in to the Prophet وسلم, knocked on his door, took permission. Aisha anha said, Oh Prophet of Allah, there's a person by the door. He wants to see you. The Prophet said, let him in. But you know, he's, he's amongst the worst of his people. When he came in, the Prophet وسلم, spoke to him very calmly. Very nicely, very respectfully. When he left, Aisha anha said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, you said what you said. You said he was the worst amongst his people and then you spoke nicely to him. Look at the words of the Prophet وسلم. Ya Aisha, oh my wife, the Prophet وسلم, said, the worst amongst people on the day of Qiyamah in the presence of Allah will be the person who people fear because of their indecency. For there are many children who are scared of their fathers. When dad walks through the door, they run to their rooms. We'll be very far from the mercy of Allah if that is who we are. Get the guidance. Go for counseling. Calm down. Find ways, whatever it is, strategies to manage our anger for it destroys families. The Prophet ﷺ has said that a person who sees, that if you see somebody whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given more beauty than yours, more wealth than you then you look at the person who has less than you otherwise you will have less value for Allah's blessings upon him my brothers and sisters this is amongst the biggest challenges we have in marriages today that we are trying too hard to live above our means we put ourselves in debt Go to our friends, oh, he's got a beautiful black leather lounge suite. Man, I need to match this. Chuck that old one out. Go to whoever we go to. Take it on loan. So what are we doing? 
more and more debt upon debt upon debt where reality is if we took a few months accumulated the cash we could have bought something very nice for cash sleep nicely at night no one's going to knock on my door you owe me this you owe me that but we live above our means we strain our relationships now we have to work extra hours to make up the payment now the wife has to go work and put the kids in childcare. all of the stresses we burden ourselves with because of our desire to lo- live beyond what we can so for young people who want to get married i'm telling you now my advice to you is start humble and keep going humble you'll be happy you'll be comfortable Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the verse I mentioned earlier that it is a sign from Allah that He gives you a spouse so that you find tranquility. We need to be striving for tranquility in our marriages. Not be the reason for the breakup, not be the reason for the stress, but think of ways to develop tranquility within our marriages and find strategies. Speak to those. You see an old man, 50 years married, go and talk to him and say, oh, Brother, how did you do it? 50 years? MashaAllah, tell me, you, you'll hear some amazing wisdom from them. I'll leave you with a quote. Marriage is like a garden. It takes time to grow. Those people have put time, energy, effort, love, dedication into it. Marriage is exactly the same. The harvest is rich unto those who patiently and tenderly care for it. But what's the great thing about it is that your children are going to play in that beautiful garden. Your children are going to enjoy the beauty, beauties of your marriage. They're going to be happy. They're going to be tranquil. They're going to grow up confident. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our marriages.